In this video tutorial, I'll be teaching you how to make the stainless steel Celtic Viking Torque Bracelet featuring the flat wearable wire winder. If you would like additional information on the wire winder, please check the linked video in the upper right corner. So this bracelet consists of seven strands. Each of the strand contains three separate strands and they are twisted in a clockwise fashion using a power drill. So chuck one end of your three wires into the drill and the other end into the vise. Make sure you pull tight, nice tension on that. All of your wires need to have equal tension if you do not have equal tension, you'll get a little kink in the wire. So it does take a little bit of practice to make sure you have even tension. So there are seven of those little three wire bundles that make up the outer portion of the bracelet. I wanted a thicker core and didn't have anything in stainless steel. So I just used a 10 gauge piece of copper wire as my core. And using these little clamps and some tape to bind up the little wire bundle and doing that both on the bottom and the top. Getting them all organized, making sure there's no twists and one isn't crossing over top of another one and getting that bundle all straight before it gets taped in place. I've slowed this section down so you can see a couple little kinks in the wire and that's what I was referring to. Since these kinks are towards the end I went ahead and used those wires because that's going to end up being waste and cut off but you do not want to have kinks in the wire or that will show up in the final bracelet. So once everything is organized, I'm going to go ahead and tape that. This is just some Gorilla tape. You can use duct tape. You can use painter's tape. It really doesn't matter the type of tape that you use. Something that's easy to remove. And I am putting actually two pieces of tape on there. The clamps only will tighten up so small. So if your bundle is too small, the clamp won't clamp. So put a piece or two of tape on there. That'll increase the diameter of your bundle. I like these little pipe clamps. I don't have to have a separate uh, socket driver or screwdriver to tighten them. Now that everything is in the jig and bundled top and bottom, pull everything up and while pulling up you're going to twist clockwise at the same time. You want to watch your wires and make sure everything is laying smooth. I am finding as I make these bracelets that a smooth core wire gives me a better result than if I were to take another one of these wires and make it the core. So I'm using a smooth piece, an untwisted piece of 10 gauge copper wire for my core. And so you're going to continue to pull up and twist. And I twist until the wires start wanting to bunch up. Once the wires start to bunch up and are no longer laying flat, then I know I've twisted it as far as I can twist it. Being able to twist stainless steel wires this thick, this heavy, requires some sort of mechanical manipulation. Being able to do this by hand um, would be very, very difficult. 
So the uh, winder ends up being a really invaluable tool because it helps keep your wires organized. It helps give you perfect tension and it takes the hard work out of twisting heavy stainless steel wire. The wire starts out soft, but the more we work the wire, the harder the wire becomes. And this is what it looks like directly off of the jig. So we need to take those wires and get them really nice and compact against the core. So I am putting it in a swage block and using a small weighted hammer, I'm pounding everything down nice and tight. And you can see the difference between where I have tapped it down and where I have not tapped it down yet. So you're gonna start in the middle and work your way towards the end. If you work from the end towards the middle, the wires will start to spring up in the middle. So you want to work towards the outside, from the inside to the outside. Once I've got that all nice and smooth, then I moved over to a brass hammer and that's gonna get everything even tighter yet. And you can see that there. Again, working from the center out. Flip it around, start at the center, and work your way out. It's gotten compact and tight enough now, I can work into the smaller channel and just fine tune everything make sure it's all nice and tight. So I found the easiest way to cut through all of this heavy, heavy wire is a cutoff saw. This is just an inexpensive cutoff saw using metal cutoff wheels. Um, it comes from Harbor Freight. You can cut off your wires with a wire cutter. Um, it, is, um, it is much more difficult. So I bundled all of the wires and I taped them and I'm cutting directly through the center of the tape. Taping the ends is important. If you don't, the uh, cutoff saw is going to cause the wires to spring open. So you want to make sure you have your bundle nice and tight with some tape. Again, this is some Gorilla Tape. You can use duct tape, you can use painter's tape. The uh, type of tape really doesn't matter, just so long as it holds everything nice and snug and easy to remove. So just checking, make sure I'm, I have everything centered, and then just letting the saw do the work. The little cutoff saw is quite an invaluable little tool. We don't use it all the time, but when you do use it, it really comes in handy. So I am tapering the ends on a vertical belt sander. This is actually a belt and disc sander. Mine is from Grizzly, but you can purchase one inexpensive from Harbor Freight. The end caps consist of 3 8 inch by half inch by inch and a half spacers. So these are just some things I had laying around and I found that they uh, fit nicely. Once I tapered my ends, I found they fit nicely. So once the end is tapered, you want to get those caps shoved on there really, really tight before you go and cut them off on the cutoff saw. If they're not tight, they're gonna go flying off of there. So what I do is I put the cap on and then slam it down vertically on a hard surface to make sure that cap is really tight. And using the disc portion of the sander now, I'm cleaning up the end and now giving a little bit of a chamfer to that upper edge and removing the sharpness. And you can see how I can shove that cap down on there it's very important when using power tools that uh, you have 
full control of your material. So you can, um, if you don't have a sander, you can do all of this with files. You don't want to use an expensive file on steel. Just some inexpensive uh, Harbor Freight files are fine. And then finishing it up with some sandpaper. I decided to take the diameter of the cap down a little bit. So I am rotating it against the vertical belt sander and removing some of the material. And again, giving a little chamfer to that edge and making sure that nice, it's nicely rounded and not sharp at the top. And you can see it makes a really, really pretty cap. So I decided to finish off my caps with some steel ball bearings. So I'm testing to make a decision as to which one I like the best. Do I want the ball to sit more proud on the cap or do I want it to sit more inside of the cap? And I decided for the latter and chose a six millimeter steel bearing for that. Now it's time to attach everything with epoxy. We're going to mix the epoxy. This is JB Quick Weld. It's a wonderful product and works very, very well when you want to connect metal to metal. Using a little blob of each of the uh, tubes. One is a hardener, one is the epoxy. And then mixing everything. This is just a little scrap of acrylic and a little uh, plastic spatula. You want to mix everything very thoroughly. If you do not mix thoroughly, you most likely will never get um, full hardening of the epoxy. And I apologize, I went off camera a little bit here, but all I'm doing is just adding some of the epoxy into the top hole of the cap. Cleaning up a little bit and dropping that down in there. Doing the same thing on the opposite end. And then just remove any excess epoxy that might squeeze out. Now everything needs to be clamped. You want to have everything clamped for a minimum of four to six hours, preferably overnight. And I find these uh, ratcheting spreader clamps from Harbor Freight work very well for this purpose. So after the epoxy has cured, now it is time to form your piece into a bracelet shape. The stainless steel has become extremely work hardened at this point and I have a lot of arthritis in my hands and I'm finding that uh, manhandling it was becoming very difficult. It's not impossible but it was becoming very difficult and I did not want to have to anneal so instead of struggling here, I decided to use our flat wearable bender, which are attachments for a one ton arbor press. And you can do all kinds of bending, including heavy stainless steel. So I started out with the medium roller against the rubber block, and this will start the general shape I like starting on the rubber block with a larger roller and that will help prevent any kinking. Because if you start out directly in the form with one of the steel pins, your chances of uh, getting a kink 
are much greater and once you kink the stainless steel it's going to be extremely difficult to get that kink out so you want to take your bend nice and slow and just helping push it until I get the initial shape So once I've gotten the initial shape, I'm going to move directly to the pin in one of the forming blocks. Now you want to be gentle at this point because if you press too hard, you will create a kink like I just was speaking about. So just small, gentle presses to form the bracelet. Little presses are much, much more effective than really honking down on it. And then just checking everything, looking it over, seeing where I need to make adjustments, and continuing to work on the bender until I have the desired shape. And there you have it. No heat, no annealing, no pickling, no polishing. Absolutely gorgeous. For an alternative cap, um, I used some of these little Viking hair beads I purchased from Amazon and did the stainless steel uh, bearings on the end of that as well. If you like what we do, please like and subscribe.